channeling the spell. This is going to be a fire raga. It doesn't kill someone, how and it kills Naya to land a kill. You oh my god! Here, apparently not, because she is going for the back line. This is instant casting, but it is What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is season four, week eight slash nine for the Rundall League. As we didn't actually have a video for you last week, the Rundall schedule is different than every other league, so we didn't have a video. And basically, the last two weeks are kind of combined into one. So this is week eight slash nine, but it is the final week. It is where we are going to find out who the six playoff teams are and what are the standings amongst those six teams. So it should be really, really fun, guys. We've got one team up at the top at the moment, the Hopeless Heroes, coached by Chise at 8-1 and one at the moment. However, he has the head-to-head -head loss to Ito Man PR of the 139ers, who are currently sitting at 7-1. and one. Chise obviously has one battle left, Ito Man PR has two, but if both of them were to win out, Ito Man PR would end up the one seed. Myself, the Los Angeles Ramses, and Sweetheart of Fundamental Forces are both currently sitting at 6-2. and two. We are going to face off against each other in this week's video. It should be a good time. Twistus, coach of Cosplay Party, sitting at 6-3, and three, has clinched a playoff spot. And I don't believe he can fall below the 5th seed, but could rise as high, I think, as the 3 seed, depending on thing, how things go. The next two teams are very, very interesting. King Delita, coach of Fanatical Flares, um, plays against Quistus this week. If King Delita loses and Manta wins against both All Smoked Up and Unhindered, Manta would actually claim that 6th playoff spot. So it should be an interesting week. Uh, to see what happens between those two teams. The final four are just looking to play spoiler though. Mr. Aloha of No Glove, No Love, Proto of Sucker Punch, Unhindered of Roar of the Storm, and All Smoked Up of My Character Romance. It should be an entertaining week, guys. We've got a number of fights for you, and let's go ahead and jump into them. Kicking off the Rundall League, we have Sweetheart of Fundamental Forces on the left side versus Chisei, coach of Hopeless Heroes, and this should be a banger as if Chisei wins this, he would officially clinch himself a first round bye in the playoffs, but if Sweetheart wins, she puts herself in control of her own destiny for a first round bye. So this is a pretty massive fight to start the video out here, as we have Shells, we have Kilfey, and we have Little Leela for Chisei. I don't think that we've seen Kilfey yet this season, so very cool to see. And on the other side for Sweetheart, it is the sole base team, alongside Lisette and Lorela. We'll see who gets the better end of this one. As the Runes of Mind and Destruction come out, this is Celis' TMR to try and nullify some of those statuses on the other side. Revitalize is here for the Lorela to try and give herself some AP. And Shield of Staves is online for Killfey, giving herself that unit resist and the barrier. And speaking of barriers, magic, or massive magic shield here for little Leela. But if she lands a silence onto Soul, I think this could be over before it starts. As the Rite of Safe Passage comes out from Shells, an absolutely excellent buff. Kilfe's going to get one more turn to buff herself before the fight kicks off. And she's got her HP absorption online. Soul needs to put in work to have a chance here for, sw for Sweetheart here. As Pyre of Chaos and Destruction come out, a decent little start here. But no heals are really needed as it looks like they are already fully healthy. Lisette, not in rage deal damage. The resist magic barrier, or resist magic uh, for magic attack resist and spirit going to be pretty helpful here. But Soul, again, I think this fight comes down to does he get silenced or not? If he does, it is over. If he doesn't, he might be able to get through this team. We'll have to see as Little Leo is going to go next. She has an opportunity. She's going to go for the silencing spell. It does not land on Soul, crucially for Sweetheart. And that is what that TMR was used for by the Celis TMR. That is what I'm trying to say. 4,500 damage from the Lorela is pretty good, but Energy Blaster from Killfate just nuking the hell out of Soul. I did not expect that kind of damage. But good lord, Soul is ready to go again. Power of Chaos is just going to come out. The healing power down is massive, as he doesn't even go for damage. He tries to heal himself up, but he doesn't heal himself barely anything. Shifting Strike from the Lisette is not nearly enough damage to get it done here. And Shells is here to support as well. The Curative Prayer is going to top up this Leela. Goodness, Lorela is on the other side here as Soul is going to get another opportunity to deal damage, but unless he can basically one-shot somebody, this fight is going to be over. He's going to go for the limit break. If anything could do it, it would be this. How much damage is it going to get done? Not nearly enough. Does land the double poison, but the look at the turn order, Kilfe is going to be next or very shortly unless Lorela can take her out. She needs to deal a ton of damage to this Earth unit. 
Can she do it? She's thinking long and hard about what she wants to do. I think she's channeling a Mega Charge. Energy Blaster is going to come out, but it only hits the set. This Kill Fae, you're turning the wrong way. You need to go for this soul instead. Silencing Spell comes out from the Leela, though. The Silence does land, and now soul is basically useless here, as Mega Charge is going to deal a good chunk of damage to the Leela, but it's too little too late here. Soul is not going to do much of anything. The Curative Prayer is going to top up this Leela as well, and just a standard attacking soul is pretty dang useless as this SR Little Leela is putting in the work. Lorela is trying her hardest. She's honestly done a pretty good amount of damage in this fight, but she doesn't have much time left. She's going to go again. Fierce Barrage actually going to hit the shells in the back line this time instead of hitting the uh, Kill Fae, as Energy Blaster is going to damage cap the soul, my goodness. And for the first time that she gets to show her face all season, this Kill Fae is really putting in the work here. Shells might even be going for an Esuna. No, she's going for a Curative Prayer. Just going to top out that Leela again. Can she end the fight? Not quite. Silencing Spell is just short of enough to kill the Lorela, as Lorela is going to turn some follow-up damage. But this fight should be over shortly. And Chise and Hopeless Heroes are going to clinch a first round by this season. Very, very impressive showing a 10 and 1 record. With two fights left to go for Edom and PR, he would have to win both of them in order to pass up Chise for the one seed. Otherwise, um, it's his to stay. So it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. But the Rite of Safe Passage coming out from the Shells, Energy Blaster from Kilfe is going to kill the Lorela, and congratulations to Chise on clinching a first round bye. Next up to bat is two Thunder Gods going at it. It is my team, the Los Angeles Ramses, with the full Order 66 Greatsword team versus Proto's Sucker Punch. And this should be an interesting one. It's Jaden the Celebrated, it's Velus and Silma versus my 170 cost Greatsword team. But this Greatsword team is better than that cost. I swear it. As in still Sealed Endurance coming out from the Winter Ravis, the Keen Blade coming out from my Shuts Out right away to try and get that CT up, and Orin is going to say a glass to the deceased. Regen to the entire party. Nullifying the poison, probably not going to matter a whole lot, but it is going to be a nice regen for the party as Treasures Hunter's Fortune coming out from this Velus. And I'm starting to wonder, that is a weird TMR to see from a Velus. I really hope that this is not an evasion team on the other side, as I am not an incredibly accurate party at the moment here. As the Immortal Spirit coming out from the Winter Ravis, another Courage coming out from Shutzel, and he also gets his heal back, which is pretty huge as there is no Courage removal on the other side. Momentum coming out from my Orin, so he gets the King Bradley TMR. He gets nice and speedy, ready to deal some damage. And I'm noticing that no haste yet on Proto's side is interesting. He's going with that TMR option instead. The extra protection coming out from the Jaden and level 4 Blizzaga immediately to start things off from Bellas, but my Orin tanks it up very, very well to start things off. The fast cast does come out from Silma. Orin is ready to go for a limit break, but I noticed those two people just turned. So the first time that I get to see this beautiful, gorgeous uh, limit break animation, it gets completely dodged by these two. Fortunately for me, though, he does get a three hit physical shield. And actually, there's three magic units on the other side, so that's not going to matter a whole lot. But the limit break coming in from Winter Ravis, it hits the Jaden, kills some of the AP, the Frostbite does not land, and Velus dodges it. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, this is bad news for me. I am 0 for 2 in terms of hitting. The only hit I've done did no damage. Dispelling Descent comes out from the Jaden. Orin still does tank it quite nicely, though. He's still at half HP after taking a couple hits, so he's at least doing that. But unless he can deal damage, this is going to be over. Level 4 Blizzard is going to come in and hit the entire party. Orin still stands strong with only 12 AP. Can he do anything? He does land a standard attack on Velus, so this means he does at least have some accuracy, some chance to hit. Lifebane Lance, crucially not going to kill the Orin. He's doing his best uh, tank impression that he can. Great guillotine from my Winter Ravis though is going to take out the Velus and say not so fast. This fight might not be quite over yet. Jamming Thrust comes out from the Silma, enough to proc the Kurge on Shutzel, but he's got a big old fat health bar to return damage. Drain Force comes out. It would have went through the physical barrier for Jaden, but he misses. He's not accurate enough. The Orin is going to drop and this looks bad for me, but Winter Ravis, does she have anything to say about it? The Great Slash comes in, it breaks the barrier, it breaks Silma's will to live. Shutzeld is gonna come back with an 8,000 damage Drain Force with the Ice Killer build. Jaden the Celebrated is going to fall, and my full Greatsword team is going to be victorious in this one. Shout out to Proto for this match. I had a really great time battling with him, and we had a, 
I mean, it feels like forever ago now, now that I'm recording this, but we had a really awesome conversation. It was a lot of fun. So shout out to Proto, really super awesome guy. And uh, mad respect for the the kind of heat build here with the evasion Jaden celebrated in Bellas. Uh, I appreciate it considering I brought my 170 cost great start team. So we both kind of had fun with this one. It was a great time. Shout out to Proto and let's check out the next fight. This next fight has massive playoff implications for the side of Manta in the Addison Manta Rays. He is up against All Smoked Up and My Character Romance. In order to crack the playoffs, in order to sneak in as the top six seed, he needs to win this, he needs to win again, and he needs King Delita to lose to Quistis. We'll see if it happens though, as it looks like All Smoked Up is coming in with the Gilgamesh, the Stern Wing of Destiny, and Surge as composition. Gilgamesh going with a set the pace to nullify haste, and Stern says, I don't need any damn buffs. I'm just starting off with damage in this fight. Keenblade coming out from the Surge is going to get that CT up, but it looks like Aerith is going with the re-raise on the Winter Ramada. But this high-octane fight, can Gilgamesh get any damage done? No, he doesn't have the movement. He is going to stay back, and a Divine Thunder Summon is going to come out from Skahal, and this fight might be over before it starts. This is going to nuke the team, and it also heals him back. This deals damage to everybody, paralyzes the Stern, and he's now above his Courage Threshold. That limit break is so absolutely busted here as Surges comes in to try and get the kill but he gets debilitating countered. Skahal lands the kill here. Winter Ramada is going to go for a limit break of her own giving herself a nice unbreakable barrier and for a moment it looked good for all smoked up as Skahal and Aerith took a ton of damage but those limit breaks turning the fights on their heads. This is a quicken from Gilgamesh and unfortunately it's just not going to come through. Unlucky for all smoked up as starting on the same side of the map here he was clearly not able to get what he was doing, trying to do, accomplished with the Quicken and the Keen Blade. It would have probably looked pretty damn cool, but he doesn't get the opportunity. The Thunder is going to come out from the Skahal. He is going to claim the kill here, and Manta is going to pick up the first win that he needs to at least have a chance at trying to make the playoffs. Again, he needed to win this. He also needs to win against Unhindered, and he needs the uh, King Delita to lose to Quistus. So speaking of, that is going to be the next fight that we hop into. We'll see who wins. This next fight is between Cosplay Party and the Fanatical Flares. It is the duo Earth Evasion team alongside Katia to support them. And on the other side, King Delita is running the classic Helen of the Black Rose alongside two Black Mages. It is Ishtola and it is Elshra. So going with the Time Mage angle, we'll see if it can pay dividends here. King Delita with a win would clinch a playoff spot with a loss, would leave it up to the match of Manta versus Unhindered. So what will happen here? Quistus has already clinched a playoff spot, but a win may help him with his overall seeding. So obviously in a match, very important to both players. We'll see who comes out on top. Aurora Blessings coming out from the Kadia to get that light resistance up is very useful against that Helen on the other side. The Quicken already coming out from Elstra, so very, very interesting to see. It does give her an opportunity to get an additional buff off. So the Hex of Undoing is here and Resilient Stance is here for Halloween Fred. This is pretty massive as it does give herself some guaranteed hit nullification. So you cannot use any of that, although there really isn't much of that on the other side unless you're going for Holy anyway. But the resist magic coming out from Katia, there's so many buffs to try and nullify this damage. Quistus is doing a damn good job of it. Elstra coming in for another Quicken, though, is going to speed up this Helena. She's coming in for a limit break. I don't know if this hits Halloween Fred, but I'm pretty sure that Lucio dodged it. Rose Fulmination, does it do any damage? It dodges by both of the evasion units. Does give herself a barrier in case Katia decides to go aggressive, but it only hit the Katia. Ishtola, is she going for damage or is she going with a buff? Not entirely sure here as Halloween Fred's going to go for a limit break. And I will say, guys, if this blind lands, this game is probably over. 2,900 damage. The blind does land. That is pretty massive. Unless she has holy, there's no way in hell she is going to hit these evasion units. Dispel slam that was going to put her out of her misery. She's going to go down. The re-raise will bring her back. Does she get an opportunity to attack again? The protect is going to land on her, but she needed that a lot damn sooner. Katia going to go next. I assume she's just going to heal herself back up very selfishly. There it is with the curative prayer. She's going to top herself up. Halloween Fred should be able to seal this kill though. She goes with the fatal pirouette. It's enough to take out the Helena. It deals some damage to Ishtola as well. And this time it's just saying, who the hell am I supposed to quicken now with Helena in the grave? And I will say for Manta, this is looking very, very good as King Delita is going to fall in this match. Quistus may be able to upgrade his seeding 
in the playoffs here potentially as well. And it is going to make that next fight between Manta and Unhindered very, very interesting to see who claims that sixth seed. As the slow counter comes out from Elsha, it's very cool to see slowing down this evasion unit, but she's got nothing to do but heal herself. And with all that healing power down, it does not matter. Mortal Draw is going to remove her from the fight, and Qu Cosplay Party and Quistus are going to be victorious in this one. This next fight is between the 139ers, coached by Edelman PR, and No Glove, No Love, coached by Mr. Aloha. Edelman PR, in order to claim the one seed, needs to win both of his remaining two fights. And if he loses one of them, there is potential for one of the other teams to sneak up into that two seed, especially my team if I am able to win my next matchup. As Banishing Barrier comes out from the Rachez to get that Magic Barrier online, a bunch of health shield is going to be very useful considering these are three magic units coming out from Iroh here. Mr. Aloha's team with the full glove team. Very fitting of the team name here as Marguerite's going to go with the AoE buff. Sadly's going to come in with the Immortal Dogma and saying, hey, this Rachez is going to be damn tanky with not only the massive magic barrier, but also the re-raise. Fuel to the fire is going to increase Roy's damage, but hopefully gets an opportunity to kind of pop off here as Rachez is going to go next with the Keen Blade. And you don't always think of it because a lot of these magic units cannot use Keen Blade, but she is one of the ones who can. Ravelka looks like is not in range to deal damage. She's actually going to channel a spell here and not move. That is very weird. I have never seen her go for a channeled spell and not move before. That is interesting to say the least. As it looks like Zoma's gonna walk forward, Indractor Nation's gonna land confusion, and that is not good news here for Mr. Aloha. As it's a heart like needles, that is why she didn't move, because she wanted to get the AoE buff on not only herself, but also Roy. That will increase their damage, but the Quicken lands on a Rage has, and if she can find these fire units, it's going to be over. She doesn't need to find the fire units. Zoma is going to drop. And can these two fire units find anything back in return? The Deflagration Blast is going to land, but that 7,500 shield is massive. The Counter Cure is just going to shake it off like it's nothing. And Roy Mustang with a true triple combustion cannot break through. We'll drop the Bravery. But uh, this Bravery down team from Mr. Aloha, unfortunately, is not enough to make it work as they are going up against a full magic team on the other side. Indoctrination is going to come out from the Saddley, hitting both of these team members. And Rachez. Good night, Princess. Counterman Slash is going to drop both of these units, and Edoman PR is going to continue the hot streak. He wins against Mr. Aloha. He has only one fight remaining versus Proto. If he were to lose, he would open himself up for the possibility of losing that first round bye. But if he wins, he will claim the first seed overall. It's going to be an incredibly important fight, but congratulations on this one to Edoman PR. Three fights left to go in the Rundall League regular season here, and we've got Proto, coach of Sucker Punch versus Edelman PR in the 139ers. Proto was out of the playoffs, but he's looking to try and play spoiler here. Running with the Dragon's Bloodline TMR, Tonight the Moon Bleeds Red from the Rafael. We've got the full Ice and Water team, which could be interesting. Going up against Elia the Alabaster and Alum. This is a great call, it looks like, from Edelman PR here with the full fist and spear synergy but that elemental advantage is looking pretty clean for him and if he wins this fight he would claim the one seed overall tranquil spirit coming out this is the new brand new dario tmr coming out from the alim a very nice tech here versus one of the magic units on the proto side obviously two physical based units though not going to be massive but this is a limit break and this is a guaranteed hit so even if etra is dodgy this will deal damage how much it's going to do though is the question 4800 and 4500 is a fantastic start here for proto can glacella potentially clean up one of these kills surefire burst is going to do it etra is going to drop and it's looking pretty decent for proto early on but you know that Elia the alabaster is sitting there in waiting to try and take this fight over and here she comes it's a stag impact on both and it's a double kill immediately Rafael and Glacella don't even survive one hit. Good night. Skip Thrust comes out for 1,500 damage, but I think this fight is probably over. Velas needs to put on his carry pants to try and have a chance here. He needs to kill Alum in one hit, and then he needs to potentially go for Alaya and try and win that, but Sub-Zero is going to be dodged. The Alum is evasive enough to avoid the damage, and it looks like Alaya is going to speed herself up nice and fast with the king bradley tmr and you feel like this fight is probably inevitable the one seed for edelman pr is probably inevitable alum getting 2k damage can Velus finally get some damage down can he claim a kill on this alum to potentially make this actually a fight 
or not. He's going to go with the height based cure. He's going to heal himself up to full. And it's like the Jaws music coming in. Da -da. Da -da. Here comes Elia Sphera Historia with a ton of damage from the limit break. I expected this to do a lot to Velas. 6,000 damage, actually not quite as much as I expected, but Velas is probably just going to heal himself back up here, and eventually these two lightning units should be able to take him down. Is he going to do it? Is he going to make a liar out of me? He's just taking his time thinking about it, trying to uh, contemplate his, his options on which way he would like to die. As the Marauder's Blade is going to land the silence to make things even worse as that Dario Horn TMR coming through huge. Bolt Jab does 8,800 and congratulations to Edelman PR and the 139ers. The entire season he has not been listed as the first place person he lost to his first match ever to me and has won every single match ever since so it took him every single week until the final fight but he has finally put himself in the first seed heading into playoffs massive congratulations to him two fights left to go here in the rundall league and we have my team the los angeles Rams versus Elena cost 90. It is Sweetheart's fundamental forces going up against each other. She has been trying to push me to change Starlight Elena's cost to 90 for next season, but she's doing a bad job of it because she keeps winning with this unit. But hopefully I can stop that hot streak as Instill Sealed Endurance comes out from the Winter Ravies here. And what is Sylvie going to go for? It is the King Bradley TMR. It is the Haste. And this is the main play from this other side. They are trying to just go as fast as possible. But Grifford says, screw buffing. I am starting this fight right the hell now. Hammer of the War Master coming out. This is going to drop the AoE resistance. It does a really good chunk to Elena. Just over 6k after the two hitter. But he is sitting all by his lonesome here. As the Aurora of Blessings is kind of come out from the Dia. I wanted to try and get that light resistance up. I said, hey, Grifford, you may want to wait a little bit. But he doesn't want to. As the Dragon's Blood line comes out from the Lisette. She's going to start walking forward and Sylvie is going to go next. I think she's probably in attack mode. Maybe she goes for the limit break and if she does this is going to be a very scary Elena at that full health bar. And she's thinking long and hard which means this is probably the limit break. It is going to be make a wish. She's going to try and heal her to full and give herself that one hit barrier. Going to be very very useful here as Elena is going to be fully restored. Starlight Elena, how much damage can she do to this Grifford? I will tell you, I turned off most of my defensive passives on Grifford, and you can see it as 7,400 damage coming out. Really, really nice by the Starlight Elena. Immortal Spirit is here for Ravi. She still can't reach somehow, which is just absolutely crazy. I think Grifford is in the way of her limit break, or else she would have went for it. But the Sylvie now should be in attack mode. Can she chain up with the Starlight Elena? Cheerful Paladin Strike is just barely enough to take out the Grifford. And I'm thinking, shit, this fight is probably over for me as he doesn't even get an opportunity to go. Double Arch Slash is a really nice start by the Dia, who I have not brought a single time yet this season. But Lisette with the Iron Body Stance is going to close the gap. And Starlight Elena says, hey, this looks like a perfect spot for a limit break. Don't mind if I do. She's thinking about it. She's going to go for it. It's going to be the Prismatic Punishment. We've seen this limit break probably 3,000 times over the course of our lives. I don't want to see it one more time. Is how much damage is this going to do? A ton to the Dia. My Dia almost dies in one hit. And I'm hoping that Sylvie doesn't go for an attack here. Hopefully just sits back and heals so I can at least get an opportunity to deal some damage back. That is what I'm praying for. But I don't get that as Slate Wiper is going to come in. Huge light slash chain damage. My Winter Rabbies does hang on for the Courage. So she gets another opportunity to deal a little bit of damage back. Hoping for a limit break to turn the tides. And she's going to go Holy Knight hijinks. But that's all it's going to be. It's just going to be hijinks as there's no way to come back from this 1v3. She will knock down the Elena to her Courage for her trouble. Put the Frostbite on. But we needed that a lot sooner in this fight to be able to win this one. Shifting Strike comes out from the Lisette, and that is a huge win for Fundamental Forces and Sweetheart, knocking me down a peg before the playoffs. So this is a huge win for her. Um, honestly, this fight, in terms of the standings, neither one of us could have claimed a buy when this fight started, uh, and I think we kind of both knew that. But going into it, there is some seeding changing that could happen. So basically what would happen is Quistus is always going to be the fourth seed, no matter what, because we're all basically tied in terms of record. Uh, but if I won this, I would be the three seed. And if she won this, she is the three seed. So she ends up as three. I will end up as five. Uh, but obviously, we are all going to the playoffs regardless. But a huge win for Sweetheart. Very much congratulations. And you have pretty much sold me. I agree. S Elena should not be cost 100. She should be 120. Let's head to the final battle.
final fight of the regular season here, guys. It is massive in terms of the playoffs. We've got Manta's Addison Manta Rays versus Roar of the Storm, coached by Unhindered. And Unhindered is looking to try and play spoiler. Manta is trying to sneak in to the playoffs. If Manta wins, he's the sixth seed. If he loses and Unhindered wins, King Delita is the sixth seed. So King Delita is Unhindered's biggest fan at the moment, and Manta is trying to prove that he belongs in that top six. Undying Lion coming out from the Elda to try and give him some of that AP restore as well as a number of other buffs. The McLeod coming in with the Vega TMR to try and proc Berserk. If he is able to land that on either Aerith or Skahal, it could be pretty massive against one of those mages. It looks like Aerith continuing to start channeling a spell. Skahal is finally in attack mode here in Winter Armada with the Hazard Soul. This buff not giving a ton other than some status nullifications and a little bit of attack up. Not nearly as good as Shuts Elts, but it does something here as the Guard Haste comes in, making her nice and speedy. Thundaga Disposer coming in, and obviously, honestly, Agrius tanked that very, very well. The Candescent Hue is going to try and land the Confusion on the enemy team. If this lands, this could be trouble for Manta. It lands a double Confusion CT up on Skahal, but if you take your turn sooner, you're not going to be able to do anything as you are confused, sir, as Binding Javelin coming out from the Elda is a good chunk, but Skahal does not drop yet. Binding Javelin will take him out, though. He is down for the count, but the re-raise is here, and they are all stacked up for Skahal. How much can he get done, and can Aerith heal this team to full before it even starts? Wait! Wait a minute! Holy shit! Winter Amada tries to attack her party member because of the confusion. The debilitating counter takes her down. The re-raise gets proc, so she's back to life, but Skahal says, don't you dare attack me. I will put you down on the ground. And now he decides to attack the correct team as the Divine Thunder Summon comes in, but it only hits the Agris. I thought they were stacked up, but it looks like some height range issues. He's not able to get in range to deal damage. Holy Prayer will top him up, but is it too little too late? And with that re-raise gone on Winter Amada, she is way more susceptible. The Elda is going to go next. Lion's Drain coming in with huge damage onto both. It drops the Winter Armada before she ever gets the Limit Break. And Unhindered looking to try and upset Manta here. Looking to try and clinch a playoff spot for King Delita. He might have just pulled this off. Aerith is going to start channeling a spell, but she doesn't have full life in her kit. Which means in a 3v1, this is going to be all over. Unhindered. Unfortunately, one of the most unlucky players all season. I've said it many times. Comes through huge in the final battle not only to beat Manta and to put a win in the column at the end of the season, but to put King Delita in the playoffs. Guys, that was a hell of a battle. Honestly, that confusion into debilitating counter, I feel so bad for Manta, but that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Uh, his party member did 6K to him. That was that was absolutely nuts. But shout out to Unhindered for coming up clutch. I know King Delita is probably a huge fan right now, but that was an awesome battle to end on, guys. And let's check out the standings. All right, guys, nine weeks of battles in the books here. And we've got Edoman PR of the 139ers currently sitting in first place at a nine and one record. Nine wins. The only loss is to yours truly in week number one, and that was a nail-biter that could have went either way. This guy could easily be undefeated heading into the playoffs. He has been very, very dominant. And speaking of dominant, Chise, coach of the Hopeless Heroes, currently sitting at 9-1 and one in the second seed. So Edo Man PR finally passed him up in the standings. Like I said, obviously has that head-to-head -head tiebreaker. It's not that big of a deal. Being the one seed versus the second seed really doesn't matter too much. It could matter against who you play versus. Uh, but most importantly, your top two, you get a first round bye. So that is the one thing to keep in mind. And then the next three teams are all tied with the exact same record. We've got Sweetheart, coach of Fundamental Forces, Quistus of Cosplay Party, and my team, the Los Angeles Rams, as we all ended up seven and three. However, Sweetheart beat both Quistus and I head to head, which means she will be third. Quistus beat me, but lost to Sweetheart. He is fourth. And I obviously lost to both of them. So I am the fifth seed. And King Delita, Coach of Fanatical Flares, saved by Unhindered. He ended up losing to Quistus, obviously. And obviously, Manta made it very close. He beat all smoked up, but Unhindered came to play in the final week, saving King Delita his playoff spot there. And Manta, unfortunately, just barely does not make it at four and six with the Adamson Manta race. However, for his rookie season, I think he did very, very well for himself. Mr. Aloha of No Glove, No Love, sitting there with three wins and seven losses. Proto of Sucker Punch and Unhindered of Roar of the Storm, both two and eight. All smoked up with my character Romance. Unfortunately, it wasn't his season. He did not manage to pick up a win this season, but that's okay. And let's take a look at the playoff bracket and see who faces off against each other. So this is the season four Rundall League Cup playoff bracket. 
The four versus five matchup is none other than Quistis, coach of Cosplay Party, versus myself, coach of the Los Angeles Ramses. We faced off against each other in week one. It was literally the first battle I played this season. And uh, I'm curious to see if it goes anything similar to how it did last time. For my sake, I hope it doesn't because he crushed me in that first fight. On the other side of the playoff bracket, we've got Sweetheart, Coach of Fundamental Forces, facing off against King Delita and the Fanatical Flares in that three versus six seed matchup. Obviously, the winner of myself versus Quistis goes up against Edelman PR and the 139ers, and the coach or the winner of Sweetheart and King Delita will be going up against Chise and Hopeless Hero. So I've said this in some of the other videos, being one of those top two seeds is really, really important, especially for these promotional leagues, uh, because essentially all you have to do is become one of the final two teams to be able to be promoted up into that Champions League for the following season. We take the top two out of those 12 teams. Uh, so essentially winning one best of three is enough to get you there. For these other four teams in the first round, you have to win two best of threes to be able to get there. So it should be entertaining. I'm really excited to, ends up, to see who ends up winning this Rondal Cup. I'm going to try and put my best foot forward and hopefully even if I don't win, at least put on a better showing than I did against Quizzes in week number one. So I'm looking forward to it, guys. I hope you are too. Until next time, have a wonderful day.